This thing slaps. <coughs> Not like that. What's up everybody? Who are you? And welcome to today's video. In today's video, has it been at least 30 seconds since the video started? Good. This thing fucks. Sorry I had to water it down before so we didn't get demonetized, but yeah, that's exactly what I meant. No faffing about, no beating around the bush. The Hybel Invictus is an incredible ballast song all around and I'm tired of pretending that it isn't. I isn't pretending. What? By the way, if you want to help power this channel the way the Turbo Encabulator powers Brandon, consider supporting us on Patreon. Tiers start at just three bucks a month, and patrons get access to videos like these days in advance of the public. Click the link in the description to donate and get access to our private community Discord today. Before I jump straight into gushing about this Bella song, I want to talk a little bit about its history and why I find it so interesting. Adam Heibel is an artist who has been making knives for almost a decade at this point. He started on the custom side of the knife market and has carried that mentality of perfection and artistry to everything that he does now. I met him years ago at Blade Show before the whole YouTube thing started. He's always been a really awesome down-to-earth guy with an incredible work ethic. And yet, to this day, Heibel's knives have had a bit of a rough journey becoming mainstays in the flipper market. This is a bit tragic, but I think it has a lot to do with the differences between what modern Balasong flippers want and what custom collectors want. Heibel has been big in the collector's market for a while with an impressive number of pieces gathering wide appeal. However, when it comes to flippers, we want something else. Flippers care about, well, flipping. Yahoo! No matter how pretty a balasong looks, it can't gather widespread adoption unless it flips good. And inversely, even an ugly design can be held with great regard if it flips well. Adam has been trying for a while now to meet this challenge head on. As he began work on making a production product, the first one to come out was the Valor in 2019. I got to see the Hybel Valor at Blade Show 2019 and I liked it. The look of the balasong was stellar, but the flipping action left a bit to be desired. The next year didn't exist. When I woke up from my 365 day blackout, I got to see the Hybel Sapient at Blade Show 2021. The Sapient was a big step in the right direction. So many people were impressed with the way that it flipped, me included. It was very round and the handles were a bit thin, so overall comfort wasn't perfect, but it was still really good. This was also his first production balisong on bushings and the execution on those turned out great. Next in 2022, he brought out the Menace. I'm a menace. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you good? <sighs> we covered the menace in our video about Adam's booth at Blade Show last year, which you can see right here. I'll spare you my detailed thoughts on it, but the menace was a step forward for me aesthetically while being a step backwards flipping wise. It was just too rectangular and the balance was a bit off, but the trainer version on aluminum handles was honestly really good. And so now we come to this year. Adam has learned time and time again taking community feedback at Blade Show and implementing it on his next product. At Blade Show 2023, Adam Heibel showed up with the Invictus, and I showed up not planning on buying anything. Whoops. Yeah, so unfortunately for my wallet, but very fortunately for my collection, I impulse bought this knife on the spot after flipping it. I was so genuinely impressed the moment that I touched it that I knew I had to own it. The last time I felt this strongly about a Balasong was the machine-wise Serif, and you know how much I love that thing. As a matter of fact, the last time I impulse bought a Balasong was all the way back in 2018, before this channel, or Brandon, was even a thing. I'm a five-year-old with a gun, but a good heart. That impulse purchase at the time was the JK Designs Monarch, which I proudly proclaimed to be the best ballast song that I had tried at that point. This is absolutely the best knife you can buy, in my opinion. Right now, this is probably my favorite knife. Which, to be fair to myself, was true. It was the best ballast song I myself had tried at that point. However, like the handle gap on my Monarch, things have changed. Oh, I have tried so many more Balasongs at this point that I'm, well, hard to please. 
When the Invictus graced my fingertips, I knew that this was something special. This, of course, was also likely helped by the fact that when I impulse bought the Monarch, it cost me $1,100, whereas the Invictus at Blade Show was $550. Literally half the price, even with this incredible finish and design. Speaking of this incredible finish and design, we should talk about the incredible finish and design. This would allow you to understand my thoughts on the incredible finish and design. Nailed that segue. The design of the Invictus is a masterclass. Previously, I've not been able to get an exact handle on the Hybel design language. I think this has a lot to do with his history as a custom maker. With the previous three production ballast songs, Adam tried something different each time. The Invictus uses all those iterations as a foundation to build and improve on, leading to a much better product overall. The design here is very impressive. It takes after all three previous attempts at a production ballast song. The holes near the end reflect the ones from the Valor from 2019. Above that is a long section where elongated cutouts are connected to a dot with a line. This calls back directly to both the sapient with its connecting line down the middle and the full cut through oval shapes of the menace. Hybel did an impeccable job of bringing all of these design elements together to a unified look that I adore. And I haven't even gotten to the insane finish yet. The blade is made of RWL 34 Dama steel, which is a nice steel used in a lot of custom products. It's got an elongated clip point harpoon style, which I think looks fantastic and really ties the image of the whole knife together. It runs on tang pins, which is fantastic to see. Zen pins are awesome, but have their own problems. Tang pins are generally the best and longest lasting pin system for balasongs, especially when this well done. This is also an area where small touches matter, like how Adam hand polished each one of the tang pins to a brushed finish. Small details like this are the main benefit of getting a production product from someone who is a custom maker primarily. This attention to detail Adam has shines through in everything he makes. Speaking of attention to detail, did you pay attention to the detail of the shirt that I'm wearing in all of the B-roll? Pride Month has come and gone, but our Balasong Pride shirt will never go away. Alongside that, we also have this recent addition to our design roster, a vulp being held in the teeth of a fox skull. All our shirts are made of high quality materials for comfortable all-day wearability even in the summer heat. Upgrade your closet and support the channel today by visiting willhirsch.gay and seeing what designs we have in stock. Your neck smells weird. The pivot system of the Invictus runs on bushings, which are very well tuned. No play whatsoever when properly lubed and perfect swing all lead to the performance of this balasong being top tier. It weighs in at four and a half ounces and has beautiful full channel 6AL 4V titanium handles. What was done to those handles and blade is a whole other story entirely. The blade has a blackened finish, which was then laser polished with a pattern resembling tiger stripes. Whatever he did to get this finish is amazing. The polished areas look golden in the right light and contrast the blackened blade amazingly well. For the handles, they were also blackened before being lasered. However, I am unsure how this finish actually came to be. As you can see, the lightning pattern on the handles looks golden, which I thought was normal anodization. However, the gold hue changes in some spots to darker brown and bright blue. This means that the handles have actually been heat anodized. Normally, black and titanium is a bit of a problem when it comes to durability. You can easily scratch the coating with things like the rings you wear, and those scratches show up as bright silver on the black background. The finish on my Invictus, however, is amazing. Still scratching the same way, but hiding those scratches among the lightning pattern perfectly. They simply sort of blend into the background and add to the overall texture of the knife, similar to the way that leather ages. It also helps that somehow underneath the black is more gold instead of silver. This means that the scratches are not distracting the way they are normally. I have no idea how Adam achieved this finish. I'm convinced that he is a master of his craft and many would likely agree with me. But even more impressive than that, this masterful finish didn't cost me anything extra. 
That's right, even with this crazy finish on the Balasong, it was still just $550 at Blade Show. Since then, the price has increased to $650 for online retail, but that is still an insane value for what you're getting. If you want one of these custom finishes on the Invictus, you should go check out the links below, as I think people are sleeping on this thing way too much, and I can't imagine that they will stay in stock very long once people realize how good it is. But even the stock Invictus provides a great modding platform, and you could easily purchase purchase it raw and then send it off to be customized by any of the amazing modders in our community at a later date. But of course, before you buy one, you should probably know how it flips. Good. I'm glad we agree on that. We get along well, you know, you and I. Don't we get along? No. Oh, uh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Best friends. Best friends. The design of this thing is fantastic, but the reason that I bought this one on the spot is because of how good it feels to flip. I've flipped a lot of Balasongs in my time. Some are round, some are square, some have lines, and some have hair. I don't know why I went all fucking Dr. Seuss on him, but when it comes to that satisfying feeling we are all chasing, no Balasong, 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 no Balasong has brought it to me as effectively as this one. From the moment I picked it up at Adam's booth, it just felt right. The handles were given a more square shape than the previous iteration, with chamfers that give it a nice rounded feel in the hand. The weight of this thing is perfect. Four and a half ounces is a great compromise between a strong and hefty, yet nimble and responsive Balasong. This Balasong is handle biased, more so than the Squid Cracker Akin, but not so much that it is problematic. In fact, this thing hits my balance preferences perfectly. It's got the weight needed to carry momentum from trick to trick while also being incredibly responsive. It does not lag behind at all, instead seeming to listen to whatever I want it to do in a way quite similar to how I felt about the Serif or the original Bearing Monarch. I think the Monarch comparison is especially important. Originally, I had Bearing Monarch number 69 and I praised it for its responsiveness. After the handle gap deteriorated, we attempted to remedy it by replacing the bearing blade with a bushing one. This ended up not actually being a good solution though, partially because the handle gap went away again almost immediately, but also because on bushings, the Monarch just isn't as good to me. The bearings added a feeling of lightness and responsiveness that was just lost on the bushing version. I felt like the Balasong had lost the magic that made me fall in love with it in the first place. So now, imagine my surprise at Blade Show, standing at Heibel's booth, experiencing that same level of excitement and magic with this, a Balasong that cost half as much on bushings with real tang pins. It was like a breath of fresh air. Fanning this Balasong is very satisfying. I love the way it smoothly rotates in my hand and carries through the fan effortlessly. The handles are very grippy. All the face milling does a great job of providing grip exactly where you need it, and the holes at the bottom combined with the comfy jimping mean that doing ladders on this Balasong is a treat. The slight harpoon shape to the blade is fantastic for chaplains, hugging your finger while the chamfered spine adds to the comfort. Everything about it feels so well thought out when it comes to flipping. It takes every trick that I've thrown at it perfectly and keeps coming back asking for more. It's also shockingly durable. I have dropped it tip down many times at this point and still have had that uh, nice sharp point to be deathly afraid of. Alongside that, the handles take drops extremely well. I was afraid to flip it over concrete originally, but after the first drop, I could barely see a single scratch on it. I was no longer afraid after that. I'm always afraid, and that's why I have a gun and a good heart. This message brought to you by The, the Brandon, Brandon Clones for class president. I have a lot of Balasongs in my collection. I change up what I'm flipping on a daily basis, grabbing a new Balasong off my wall and going from product to product. After I bought this thing, that changed. Instead of flipping anything else on the day I bought this, I flipped it. And then I flipped it the next day and the next and basically every single day from Blade Show until right now. I have been choosing to flip this over my Serif, my Tsunami, my Alien, and many other incredible knives. Is it any more special than those? 
probably not, but something about it speaks to me. It's a feeling that I can't exactly describe, but I am trying. I just can't get enough of it. That is the most glowing review I think I could possibly offer. And so, yes, the Hybel Invictus is my favorite battle song. Or maybe the Machine Wise Serif is? Honestly, both hold about equal importance in my eyes and both are so different that I love having them each to flip. If you are interested in getting an Invictus, I encourage you to do so. I was not paid for this review, I paid for this battle song myself and I get no kickbacks from anything related to Invictus sales. Instead, what you get when buying something like this is the knowledge that you are supporting a small artisan maker in pursuing the job that they love. I think that is worth more than any else. Yeah, but when's he gonna make an Invictus without a blade? YouTube short link right there. Also, don't forget to check out the custom versions of the Invictus on Adam's website. They cost a little bit more than the production version, but are well worth it. They include custom hand ground blades and completely unique handle patterns and finishes. This is just another benefit of having someone who is known for customs making production products. Speaking of, I would be doing you a disservice to not tell you about the unboxing experience. It is shockingly good, with obvious thought put into the design of this unique tubular packaging, acting as a nice way to display your Balisong when you aren't using it. There are also stickers, a carrying pouch, and a nice aluminum certificate of authenticity included in the box. I don't know what the future of the Invictus will be. Adam has been known for moving on each year to a new product, but in my opinion, he has really captured something special here. Invictus means undefeated or unconquerable, and I hope that it can live up to its namesake with Adam producing more of these, or at least iterating on them in the future. But if not, I'll be glad that I have one anyways. Also, for those curious, here are the BS scores for this Balasong. Unsurprisingly, the Invictus now ranks alongside the Serif in our charts. It is neck and neck, and I think that is a very impressive feat. I want to thank all of our generous patrons for their support. I hadn't even realized until I started writing this script, but I've been making Balasong videos on YouTube for almost five years now. That is incredible to me, and your support has been a big part of making that dream a reality. We tried working with sponsors in the past, but I was never a really big fan. Instead, having the backing of our community through Patreon has been much more rewarding, and I am very grateful for that. If you'd like to help keep this channel going and support Brayden and I directly, consider donating to the link below. Tiers start at just three bucks a month, and every bit helps me feed the growing hole in my wallet from being in this accursed hobby. Also, it helps me pay rent, but hey, you know, what are you gonna do? I like holes. Oh. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, will you? Will you excuse me? now? Especially after all that I've done? I don't think so. I don't think at all. Yahoo! Make sure to smash that subscribe button. <laughs>